Ladies and gentlemen, we've all heard of body language, I'm sure. Uh, and our next speaker is a body language expert. He's someone who has traveled the world to teach his clients to come from as simple a place as being students all the way to royalty. Uh, and he's also been on the major news channels uh, talking about his body language analysis of world leaders like Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Kim Jong-un. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome with a warm, warm round of applause, Mr. Christian Chua. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. That was uh, the most flattering introduction I've ever had. You read it exactly the way I wrote it. <laughs> so I've been doing this for about 20 years, uh, speaking for a living. Uh, this is one of my big breaks. During the Trump and Hillary election, I was uh, invited to Mediacorp to give a live commentary on the body language. Um, that was been to over 50 million people. Then recently when uh, Singapore hosted the Trump and Kim summit, I was uh, on uh, several major TV stations like uh, BBC, Thomson Reuters, Australian 7, Straits Times, etc. Et so um, that's one of the things that uh, made me uh, pretty well known. And so later on, I wanted to be on a front cover of a mag... This is not me, by the way. This is Nathan Hartono. Huh? <laughs> so I uh, submitted my photo to the editor and I was uh, instantly uh, rejected. And they said they will give me another cover, another magazine cover. I said, is it front cover? I said, yeah. I said, I'll take it. They said, no, I better let you know what magazine. I said, nope. If it's front cover, just print. I said, sir, I better, I, I said, no, just print it. I said, oh, he said, okay. So uh, I got seven months. <laughs> Gee, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is just a joke. Okay. So uh, I've got a very short 38 minutes, and I want to talk to you about this topic called uh, face reading. And it's under the science of epigenetics. I don't know whether you've heard of this. It's, a, it's only a 20 year old science. And what they actually subscribe is that your DNA remains the same throughout your lifetime, but there is a gene transformation, and your gene can affect you, and you can look quite different throughout your lifetime. Um, just a simple example would be like a caterpillar, the, the DNA remains the same throughout its lifetime, but it can metaphor into many forms. Follow so far? So a baby, a baby looks like a baby, and I know a lot of you, when you go and visit your friends, say, hey, your baby looks like a father. Like a bullshit. Baby looks like a baby. Don't you think so? Unless what you got the father's tattoo or you know the bushy eyebrow or the curly hair. Most baby looks like look like baby and they only start to transform and look a bit more like the parent or have the individual look later on when they're five or six years old. Don't you think so? Yeah? But all babies look like babies. Seriously. And uh, what epigenetics um, uh, uh, subscribe is that there is a gene transformation. You will start to look different uh, and it's affected by, number one, your environment. Okay, what, which country you live and how, how happy are you or not happy are you. Uh, the type of doctrines that have been inculcated by your spiritual leaders or your parents or whatever. And of course, uh, the food that you eat, the chemicals and things like that. Okay? So the DNA remains the same, but there will be a great gene expression. So to quickly try, try to convince you, this is Timothy McVeigh. Do you remember the Boston bomber? So this is before his execution. He looks angry. And what I want you to look at is the eyebrow. The eyebrow is pretty low. But if you uh, trace back the earlier pictures when he was uh, in the military, and when he's in the youngest days, and when he was a young boy, can you see that actually the uh, eyebrows start to go lower? So some people develop stronger jaws or fleshier face and things like that. So this is what I'm going to talk to you about. And after, um, throughout, uh, towards the end, I will give you some tips on how to read people. This is very, very interesting. It's a very interesting skill uh, because I even use this for networking. One day I was going for a high net worth uh, meeting and there were 40 tables and my relationship manager was asking me, what are you doing? I was walking up and down. He said, I'm looking at which table seem to be the, have the friendliest people so I can network. He said, you can do that? I said, sure. Then I went around. I said, I want to sit at that table. And because between uh, that time and before the speaker came on, I had about seven to eight minutes. And so I wanted to make sure I didn't waste my time and I could network. And when I sat there, they started talking and said, it's so chatty. Okay, so this is one of the skills that I use it for. So you know this guy, Harry Potter? Okay. Uh, how he looked younger and how he looks older, his eyebrow became bushier, bushier and things like that. And uh, you'll be surprised that even your years can move up and down throughout your lifetime. 
Okay, and your eyebrow can move up and down throughout your lifetime too. Okay. So this is a before and after. This woman is highly intoxicated with drugs, and what I'm going to show you is the eyebrow. She tattooed the eyebrow, and look at that. It actually moves. So I want to prove to you that it actually do move before I go into the structure. This is another set of mug shots, before and after. Okay, so what are we looking at here? The eyebrow became straighter. Okay, look at this face to this face. Is that sunken look? That's why sometimes when you look at your friend and say, uh, Are you okay? Is everything okay? Uh, I haven't seen you for so long. Uh, is life alright? And you say, Alright, no. But actually, it's not alright. And you've got this feeling that she's under a lot of duress or stress. And that's the reason why the saggy eyes and things like that. Okay? And uh, many of them, as I noticed, those are drug addicts and all the lips become um, thinner. They show less lips, actually. Okay? And the last one, you can see the sunken cheeks. A very good sign, uh, a very good tell, actually, that I'm going to explain to you what's all about. Interesting? Okay. So, the applications are to know. Uh, profile uh, to, to know and profiling people for business, for hiring, for sales, so HR, when you, you, you see someone, you always get this feeling. But you know in corporates, they tell you, don't be judgmental. Religion tell you not to be judgmental. Huh? Government tell you don't, be uh, don't, don't discriminate. But science call it profiling. <laughs> Seriously. The police use it all the time, isn't it? Criminal profiling. Okay, so when you have this feeling, oh, I, I don't like this guy, or you know, sometimes mothers, when you, your, your daughter brings back this guy, uh, <laughs> this boy is uh, not trustworthy. How do you know? I got this feeling. It's actually not, it's, it's just you do not know how to define the points. But throughout her lifetime, she picked up and she had this experience. This same type of face always gave her the same kind of problem. <laughs> Does that make sense now? Okay, so uh, I've been fascinated uh, by this topic for a long time. In fact, I, before this, I was in body language for 20 years. And the reason why I went into body language is because one day a yellow pager salesman walked into my office. And the moment I looked at him, I said, I cannot trust this guy. This guy looks like a crook. But, but when he started talking, he got the better of me and I started to believe in him. And within that half an hour or 40 minutes, I actually invested in his sideline. He has a sideline company. I invested $40,000. After meeting that guy for one hour, and I was con. <laughs> okay, I was cheated, uh, never got my money back, but I was very fascinated that I had that first intuition. But it wasn't intuition, it was body language undefined. You weren't trained to pick up, so you trusted. And you have this thing like, never judge a book by its cover. So you follow that kind of principle. Okay, don't be judgmental, give people a chance. But actually, it's all about profiling. Number two, to uh, create connection and conversation. And what actually happened was this. When uh, I was invited uh, to Israel, thanks to Avi, he opened some doors and I uh, gave uh, an analysis of the four prime minister candidates, which I'm going to show you later, before the election. On the way back at the business class lounge, um, I was sitting there and four American a family of four ladies sat with me and they said, so what's your name? I said, I'm Christian. What do you do for a living? And if I wanted to be alone and uh, have my own chill time, I say, oh, I'm in personal development. But if I wanted to have a conversation, I say, I read faces. <laughs> okay, because when you say, I read faces, say, what do you mean? I say, I can read your face, I can tell you your personality. Really? Read me. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that always happens. So the two younger ladies, about 18 years old, they say, read me. Then I look at her and say, are you, are you good in maths and science? And she looked at her sister, oh my God, we are both majors in maths and science. And she said, read mommy. <laughs> so I read the mother and I said, this, this, this. And she said, yeah, okay, accurate. And I said, ma'am, I see a little uh, scar, not a scar, but a wrinkle around your, the side of your cheek. Uh, do you, did you go through some kind of trauma? Did you lose a pet, a family member, uh, anyone? And she said, nope. Nope, nope. I say, but it shows on your face. Uh, did you, there's something that you saw that shocked your system. Did you see a death? Nope, nope. And the daughter, Mommy, Mommy, you saw Uncle Johnny hang himself right in front of your eyes, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 
Yeah, it, it opened a lot of conversation and then they asked my name because you got to come to my university, you, you got to do this, you can do that. So it opened up conversation. And of course, the other one is for party. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to be the life of the party, and that's what happens, I go to networking session and they say, what do you do for a living? And I say, okay, party time. And I say, I read faces. Everybody from all the other tables will crowd around and will read their face all night long. <laughs> Okay, so what do these lines tell you? I'm going to explain all these lines. It's going to be very interesting. So the first thing that you want to learn is that there's your, your face is, can be divided into two. Your left side is your personal side. No time to explain how we came to that <laughs> under epigenetics. If you want to learn, you go to YouTube and key in this guy's name, Bruce Lipton, like in the Lipton tea. Comprehensive study on this. Your left side is your personal side and your right side is your professional side. You mean we're not symmetrical? No, you're not. And I know you guys are dying to take out your cell phones and say, what do I look like? <laughs> so anyway, uh, so what happened was I was in Dubai giving a talk like this to 120 nationalities and, uh, and one girl waited for 45 minutes for her turn to, to, be, to read, be read her face. And she was from Belgium, by the way. And uh, what I saw was on her personal side, her left eye was tilted down, while her right eye was straight. If you both are tilted down, it could be something genetic. But it's one eye was tilted down and the other eye was straight. And when your eye is tilted down, it actually means that uh, it's a trauma and you're very negative about relationships. Things like that. So the first question I asked her is, uh, are you married? And she said, uh, no. So I said, my guess is either you uh, have gone through very nasty relationships and you're a bit weary about going into a relationship or you have very bad, uh, uh, you have a relationship problems with your family. And she looked at me. <laughs> and I never saw her for the rest of the two days of the convention. Okay, uh, so is that accurate? Okay, so that's your personal side and this is your professional side, which means in terms of your work, uh, things like that. Okay, so this is uh, actually Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, I, I read, to make this story short because I got 28 minutes, I'm going to bring some points. So while I was looking at his uh, video, I, I actually noticed, okay, I'm sorry, uh, this, uh, because this circle is supposed to be a bit lower, it's this line here which I want to share with you. When he started talking, this line appeared a lot more than the right side. So this is his personal side. And I saw this personal side and what this, this means, and uh, you can take for it, is that uh, you actually have a, a loss. Even your beloved pet, when uh, the pet dies and it is a shock to your system, this line can appear overnight. Okay, a loss of a family member, a loved one, a grandma, parent, family, whatever. So when I saw that, I uh, like, well, okay, uh, I, I don't know much about the Israeli leaders, but when I started to Google, um, do you remember the audacious rescue attempt that Israel did during an Air France hostage crisis? There were some guys who, yeah, and they landed in Uganda. Do you remember that one sometime back? I don't know what year it was, 19? Yeah, and uh, the Israeli forces actually uh, whacked the Ugandan soldiers, but Israel had one casualty. And the casualty was uh, his brother, Jonathan Netanyahu. He was the captain and he was the only casualty. So I do not know whether it was because, based on that, but these are all the clues to, to uh, tell you that he actually went through certain kind of trauma. Okay? The, the one below here. This line. Okay. So before I go further, what is this skill, skill also useful for? This... Uh, Workshop is usually like eight hours, but for a short one, like 45 minutes to two to three hours, there are a few things I would like to share with you. And one of these things is when you look at a guy, do you know whether he's more left brain or right brain? It's something very easy for you to pick up today. Whether he's more left brain or right brain. And this one you can download from the internet. What does it mean? Left brain are more math mathematical, pragmatic, logical type. And more right brain, emotions, colors, music creativity, etc. Got it so far? So while body language can only tell from a first look, extrovert or introvert, that's all body language can tell in the first glance. Unless you start moving or start talking, then we know a little bit more. Okay? For face reading, the first glance can tell whether you're a left brain or a right brain type. Yeah, you got that established? 
Okay, so once you understand what I'm doing, I'm uh, splitting the face into half, so you know it's a personal side and a pro uh, professional side. And the other thing we're going to talk about is whether this guy is more left brain or right brain. And obviously, there are some people who are quite middle, 50% 50, 50 or 40, 60. But if a guy is 80, 20, 90, 10, it's a very useful information, especially during sales. Right? Or during HR, when you're hiring, you know this guy is purely left brain logic. Logic, left brain, the other guy is more creative. Okay? So what I did was spend many hours creating the average face. <laughs> From the Adobe Photoshop, I took uh, average nose size, average year size, average everything average. So that when I start flashing the others, you all can compare. Okay? So this, guy, this lady looks like the Angelina, Angelina Jolie look. What is the most significant, outstanding feature on her face? Lips. lips, okay. Are you ready? Thick lips, they are more chatty. That's the science. People with thick lips are more chatty. Bigger mouth, obviously, too. My dad used to tell me, hey, those singers can, can sing very well, have big mouth. It's true. It's a fact. Okay, those big, with big mouth, uh, Winnie Houston and all those, they can sing well. So the thicker lips speak, uh, are more chatty. So if you want to go for a networking, you look for the thicker lips ones. <laughs> it's a fact, okay? The higher the, eye, the, higher the eyebrow from the eye, eyes, are more friendly people. It, and it's not the opposite. That means those with very low eyebrow are unfriendly. No, they are more intense. You understand the difference? Huh? Body language is the opposite. This one means unfriendly or defensive. This one means welcoming. Body language is the opposite. Face reading is not the opposite. Okay? And uh, what else do we uh, see? That uh, her ears, her ears are flatter to the face, this girl likes to go under the radar. Sometimes she can be very compliant, but she is not the one that wants the limelight. Take note of all these and then you go and check with your colleagues whether it's true, okay? <laughs> this guy, can you see he has thinner lips? And many of you in this room have thin lips. You know what it means? It just means that you're more careful before opening your life to others. It takes some time to win your trust before you let us in into your private zone. It doesn't mean that you're any worse off or what, but this means that it takes longer time. If I have a short period to network, you are not the one I can win you over quickly. This one means maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, and so on, okay? So they are more defensive in terms of uh, letting you into their private zone, okay? And the big chubby chicks like Joe Augustine's, <laughs> uh, they, they can master support easily. And you see a lot of leaders have this. They somehow have that kind of command and people uh, follow them. Typical Asian face, the Asian nose. Okay, so what does the nose mean? The, the stronger your nose, the more independent you are. You have, like Cyril, you have a strong nose bridge. Uh, you travel on your own, you're very independent. Okay, for the Asian small nose, it means that you like, you prefer to work in a community. HR, so you listen. Uh. When you hire a person with a little small nose, the chances of that person opening his own business and a one-man show very low. <laughs> <laughs> they are strong workers, hard workers, and that's why the, the foreigners always like, oh, we love Asians because they are just hard-working people. They are hard-working people. Okay? Uh, but the strong nose are independent people, which means you want those people in leadership. They can travel on their own. They are not... Uh, they're not so worried about leaving their family while they go out there and close big deals. So you want a stronger character, it is the strong nose. Incidentally, this is the first time I'm going to comment here because so many Israelis here, I could be wrong, but this is what I noticed. When I went, went to Israel, of course, one of the highlights was... The nose. 
Huh? <laughs> One of the highlights was see the nose. But then she got quite close. Huh? One of the highlights was to look for Gail Gadot, Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, actually, she's very pretty. And uh, well, I've noticed that most of the Israeli girls have actually very strong noses. Very strong noses. And um, why? Because they are conscripted in the army. Right? And they carry weapons. And that, that, they need a tough character because they, they are what they are told that they have to defend the country. Sometimes they have to lay down their lives. And that's what goes into their brains and then they have a stronger nose. When you see Vietnam, the Vietnamese in the 1940s, 1950s, when they are under oppression, they look really different from the Vietnamese these days. Because now that the country is turned around and the economy and is full of hope, they look better. Okay? So, and in Israel, actually, very interesting, when I was speaking to about 100 CEOs from the IT industry, they all have that very strong boss look. You could almost say unfriendly. Okay? So at the end of my talk, everybody was a good, good, good talk, but very few of them came to talk to me. But one guy came to talk to me. And while almost all Israelis have very strong nose bridge, that guy had an Asian nose. Okay? And he came and he says, uh, he says, read my face. And I said, you know, the immediate uh, thing that I see is that you have a very different nose from the rest. He said, what does that mean? I said, when they have a strong nose, they have a very strong ind uh, independent character. Does that mean I'm weak? <laughs> he asked me, I said, no, you are more focused on love, unity, and friendship. He said, you are spot on. <laughs> and he was the only one that came to talk to me. You see how iron ironic it is? Okay, so uh, that's how you read. See, this guy, can you immediately see that he's very much more intense and maybe possibly more aggressive than Asian girl? Okay, so what else do you see is actually the, the, wing, the wing eyebrow. The curved eyebrow is the most friendly. The wing eyebrow uh, can be combative, even for a girl. Okay, combative, which means you can argue. And I hate to point anyone out because I don't really know all of you, but anyone who wants to later, I can give you a private reading. Okay? <laughs> squarish. Okay, here, here's, here's your tips rolling out. Anything squarish is more left brain. Does that make sense? Anything squarish, stronger, is more left brain. And the rounder head, like, uh, see, uh, you're doing creativity, you're doing creativity, you see the heads are more roundish. And if you notice the leaders, a lot of them have very squarish head. Donald Trump, Xi Jinping, JFK, Brezhnev. Can you remember all these people? Some people are like, who is he talking about? <laughs> uh, so young. So, uh, by the way, I'm not young. I look young, but I'm not young. I'm 52, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to know how to maintain your, your youthfulness? Say yes. yes. Oh, since you insist. Uh, in order to look young, be very, very athletic, okay? Every weekend, I watch football. Anyway, <laughs> so Barack Obama is one of those unusual people with a roundish head compared to the Chinese president. Can you see it's more squarish head? So he is more uh, left brain. Jiao law. Okay? More legalistic, more uh, conformist. Do you realize this guy is a very unusual president? He goes on Jimmy Fallon, he raps, he does the mic drop, and he does a lot of funny things like going to the coffee shop and eat a, a dinner with Anthony Budor. That's his character. Okay? Now, on your left, in case you don't know who is President Narvan, uh, that's uh, Mahathir, uh, Premier of uh, Prime Minister of uh, Malaysia, and this is a Chinese president. So all of them have this squarish leadership head. Do you see that? Okay, so I can point out if you want to who the leaders in this room. Now, the other thing I want to share with you right now, as you can see, in one glance, uh, do you think uh, President Nathan is a happy, have a happier life or Prime Minister uh, Mahathir? Yeah. Nathan, right? Now, let me explain to you why and how, how you get that impression. Is the eyelids. Okay, first of all, if you have... Uh, like his eyelids is considered ma uh, massive, quite massive. 
He's, very, he's a very affectionate person. So he cares for his family, and on his uh, career side, if he's the CEO, he actually cares for the people too. Those without eyelids like Xi Jinping doesn't mean don't care. I must reiterate again. <laughs> it's not the opposite. Because people always jump there, so you mean I don't care, you mean I'm not loving. No, this means focus. Okay, they are more focused, left brain, less affectionate. Okay, in this, at this point, if you want me, I can do it. Like if, uh, if one of you, it's scary, I just point you and die. <laughs> like let's say you ma'am, uh, you're affectionate. You ma'am, you have a single eyelid. If you do mind, I just say it's, it's nothing wrong. Uh, you, um, you do not, you are, you, if you're married, are you married? You and your husband, you give each other space, or you give your husband space in a sense that uh, you, he doesn't need to keep reporting to you. <laughs> Today, what time, where I am, I, you don't need to. Okay? Not clingy. So if, if you marry someone with massive <laughs> eyelids, she might, she's very affectionate and she requires you to be affectionate too. <laughs> right? Yeah, so where are you? Where are you? Why is that long hair I see in the car today? <laughs> you do that? He takes a photo in the hotel, and you screen in and you make sure no lady's shoes. Right on! <laughs> so, for... Oh, no. Do you think he has no hope because of the island? <laughs> <laughs> no. As for my, myself and my wife, we both do not have eyelids and we are, we are focused in our work, but we are not over clingy. So I can go for long trips, like four to five days, and I, I don't talk to her for three days. And on the third day, I decide to give her a WhatsApp video call and she say, Hello, how are you doing? Fine. Uh, anyway, I'm busy now. I'm teaching your youngest son uh, maths. See you later. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Zero affection, <laughs> okay? So that's what it is. So he's affectionate, but for Mahatya, this is called eye puffs. And you say, oh, the reason why I put this picture is because they are of almost the same age, 93, 93. A lot of you guys are going to say, oh, because he's old. No, he's the same age. You see, one has eye puffs and one doesn't. When you're more weary, your eye puffs appear. That is why when you see some of your friends, you say, oh, that guy looks so fresh. Even at 80 years old, looks so fresh. The guy 30 years old, plagued with problems. It's exactly that. When you're plagued with problems, it comes down. If you see our Prime Minister, Lee Sen Long, massive eye puffs. <laughs> <laughs> On the personal side, lots of problems. The, the siblings are going against him. On the career side, also massive problems, okay? So that's what it really means. Okay, so you're asking me, I, uh, this guy has a, is quite weary about his, uh, the outlook and things. That's why he's always like quarreling and, uh, and so on. <laughs> so this is the one I'm, I'm talking about. Okay, this is the one I'm talking about. If you see it on the, pri the personal side, it's a personal loss. If you see it on the professional side, then it's a professional trauma. So once I was doing a workshop and I, uh, to, to make people talk, I actually say, share with each other your most, the happiest moment of your life, so they share. Share the funniest moment of they share. And the third one, I say, share the saddest moment in your life. The whole room becomes silent, correct? And some actually start crying. This group started laughing. Ah, 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 ah. And I went to this lady and said, ah, I thought it's supposed to be the saddest moment. Oh, my group, are everybody happy? Nobody sad. <laughs> And I look at her face and I say, ma'am, if you don't mind reading, I see there's a trauma line on your personal side. You have suffered some losses and even on your professional side, were you uh, mild, uh, maltreated? What do you call it? Ill-treated? Were you cheated? Did you have a business uh, failure? She cried. After three sentences, she just cried. <laughs> then I said, this is the power of uh, face reading. I don't want to dig into it, but you guys understand what's going on. They say, yeah. Okay? So... This is the line. But guys, please, I know this is very exciting and everything. And if you ever attend my workshop for eight hours, I guarantee you after eight hours, you are, your guys will be paranoid. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> okay, so you use this skill with a great ease, kind of caution when you go back. So these are the four uh, prime minister candidates which I uh, spoke to uh, in uh, Israel. So um, in the terms of the head shape, do you realize that Dr. Naftali Bennett is the one with the round head? Okay, so I gave some commentary on this. This is the youngest guy, and he, look, he looks the freshest, don't you think so? He has the freshest face, and who are the other candidates? So we already talked about Benjamin Netanyahu, now we talk about Benny Gantz. Uh, and uh, I just heard that uh, Ila is the neighbor. Okay, so I do not know this gentleman, obviously I'm a Singaporean. But you see the two pictures, one is face like so clean and the other one is like full of blemishes. So obviously this is under makeup. Easy? So this is the original face. <laughs> to, to, to get this kind of blemishes is a lot of time under the sun. Golfers won't understand what I'm talking about. It's not about 10 minutes under the sun, but about massive hours under the sun. So I said, this is the outdoor guy. And they told me, uh, this is the head of army. It's like our General Winston Chu previously. So he's been in the army for a long time. I say, great. So army, he's a very intense look. Uh, he's he had gone through emotions. Okay. These are stress line, obviously. Fighting wars all the time throughout his, his life. But I also mentioned, say this. Even when he's not smiling, you are getting humor lines. And this is what we call uh, frequently used muscles. Because when you smile a lot, it, it creates a crease. And even when you're not laughing and smiling, it remains there. And so the comment I made is, although he's a general and probably under a lot of pressure, when he's relaxed at home, he's a funny guy. And he's laughing. Is that true? So one lady put, raised up her hand and he says, you don't know him. I said, I don't know him. I say, he said, she said, I have lunch and dinner with this guy and you are spot on. He's lots of fun when he's not in that role of a uh, general. Okay? So that's very interesting. So he's an affectionate person because he has that eyelids. Okay? This line is an achiever line. People push themselves very hard. In fact, all the candidates have this line. HR, if you want to... <laughs> if you want to hire someone in, your, in, the, uh, in the position that pushes themselves, try to look for this line. They always try to outperform themselves. Okay, they push themselves very hard. Just like you, you are nodding your head right now, ma'am, you are one of them. Is that true? You're always pushing yourself really hard to achieve beyond what people are expected of you. If you have a cap year like that, that means uh, if, if I release helium gas, it will get trapped here. Can you hear? <laughs> okay, that's a left brain sign. Very pragmatic. Left brain. Serials have left brain. But serials here, if you don't mind, I just borrow you for a second. You realize he, he doesn't have very strong helix. The thing that separates between this part and this part. It's almost like that. Okay? Uh, very left brain. Although he has a creative side, he, he thinks uh, less emotionally <laughs> involved whenever possible. Is that correct? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Is it right? Of course, always. And <laughs> now what is this? This is professional side, right? So if you, you saw Benjamin Netanyahu was his on the personal side. Benny Gans is on his professional side. Can you come to a conclusion? Why he has trauma lines on his professional side? Being a general, fighting many wars, he may have lost some men under his watch. Okay, so these are the guesses that we can make. That's the humor lines. Okay, so for uh, Nata, Nat, Naftali Bennett, this is what I predict if he became prime minister, which he didn't, he, he would try things out of the box. Because that's what people... You saw RV's video just now on all the space, the, the scientists, they all had round head, only the announcer had a square head. Okay? They were really using their brains and they were spinning it. So this guy will try something different. Okay, now the problem is here. He has low hanging buck tooth, which is a sign of stubbornness. And the gap in between, I know some, some of you think it's orthodontics, no, if you put braces, it will come back again until its character change. 
it means that he is stubborn and he will bash through things and he will not listen to you. Once his mind is set up, he will bash things through and he might be right or he might be wrong, but he wants to prove to himself. So he will have a very limited uh, re- uh, flexibility. Okay, he will be quite rigid. Now, because I've got five more minutes, this is what I'm going to send to you right now. Huh? So what are you going to look for when I draw this line across the eyebrow? If your years is above that line, you're considered high years. Eyebrow, you draw a line across. If your years is above, it's high years. If it's not, normal. And if I draw the a line below uh, the nose, across, and your ears is hanging below that line. It's low ears. Can you understand? Mm-hmm. Okay. High ears takes in information fast. Low ears process information slow. High ears takes information fast. Low ears takes information slow. So if you, have, if you see a client with high ears, Go faster. He'll get bored listening to your 12-page pitch. If you got your guy with a low ears, go a bit slower because he processes information slower. Okay? Eyebrow. If the eyebrow is high, he responds slower. If the eyebrow is low, he respond faster. So you're wondering, hey, why, why I'm asking you a question? Mm, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Mostly all the high eyebrow. Ah. <laughs> Those with the low eyebrow, so if I, you don't mind me saying, you are like that, fast, take fast, respond fast. Right? Don't waste my time. No fluff. Right? That's it. Okay? So that's how you read people. When I meet someone like him, more, less fluff, more content. Okay? Or he, he might get bored. Okay? So... We talk about that. You see, he also have a achiever line. Three minutes. Now, this one you got to bring home. How do you network? One look. Even when if you're not an expert, one look. Who looks more friendly? No. Regardless whether the girl is smiling, okay? Because she has rounder chin and high eyebrow. Okay, that's how you network. So this guy uh, is more intense. Not the social type. They're probably good in business or as an employee, business development, etc., etc. Got it? Right brain. Plus, if they color their lips so thick, it's like, I want to communicate. That's why they're showing their lips. You see people, even in body language, when you suck in your lips, body language, huh? what does it mean? I notice you, but I'm not sure I want to connect with you. That's why when you walk by people, you just make eye contact, they do this. <laughs> Go try it later. See that a food court, somebody's walking by with a tray, all glad a guy. The guy will go. <laughs> okay. Uh, just going to squeeze in. Y'all don't mind another five minutes? Do you mind? Yeah. You're enjoying this? Yeah. Okay. So if you, if you uh, see someone in a lift and the guy makes eye contact and he doesn't make a, a complete smile, especially you foreigners, it happens in Singapore all the time. Make eye contact, we lose eye contact, we do a straight smile like that. Have you seen something like that? <laughs> especially guys do it to girls too. We, look, we make eye contact, we do this. You know what this means? It means that I'm friendly but I'm not sure if you are. That's why I have a reaction towards you. Not an erection, it's just a reaction. <laughs> Why is this? Because we have this Asian mentality that our parents tell us, don't talk to strangers. Remember that? And it's, it's, it's built in in our, in our genes. When I went to New York, uh, people said New Yorkers are unfriendly. No, they are. They are busy. But if, if you talk to them, they'll talk to you. So I waited at Times Square. I waited for a previous New Yorker girl. I said, excuse me, can I pay you a compliment? You're really pretty. And she said, well, thank you, sir. That really made my day. Have a nice day. She takes, accepts the compliment. When I went to Australia, it was the same thing. You know, when they made eye contact, good eye, mate. I saw a girl walking by, she said, good morning. I said, you're really pretty. And she said, you're not too bad. She said, Mike. <laughs> so I tried this in Singapore. I saw a pretty girl. I said, excuse me, I just want to tell you, you're really pretty. And she said, I don't like this. 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 I don't like
，跟我玩玩。She wanted to call the cops to arrest me.、Eh? Malaysian girls, best, pretty but not proud. True or not? Ask the guys. True or not, guys? Yeah, in your organization, the prettiest girl is so friendly. Ask Malaysian, Ipo, Penang, JB. But you want to disturb Malaysian girls? You know how you do that? You go behind them. You make motorbike sound. Ah, <laughs> 大枪 Snatch thief. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. So you want a more compliant person in your organization? Hire one with the ears sticking in, not sticking flat against the face. Face. If you want someone that's going to think out of the box, creative, Mazatov, Juspa. Ah,、uh, these types sticking out. Those are going to be in the business development, the creative side, the creative juices. Get this one, okay? They will not comply. So I, when I meet this type of people, I say,、uh, you won't drive against the flow of traffic, right? No, you're crazy. And I ask this guy, have you driven the,、uh, in the, against the flow of traffic? He said, yeah, of course, all the time in the car park. You know, they, they go against the flow of traffic. So that's that character for you, okay? So、uh, final two. This is what we call high ears. Can you see that? And this is what we call low ears. One or two of you, I see you have low ears. So when you have low ears, you process information a lot slower. So these guys are in a meeting. They will say slow, on, slow. On. Then they want to verify the facts. Slow, on, slow. On. Then they want to verify. Where do you get that from? And understand that. When you see such character, you understand that that's how they work. Small ears. I know one guy. I owe you. I met you at a tea break. Small ears. What does it mean? I have small ears. Uh, we are slow to listen, <laughs> fast to talk. Bigger ears, they they read a lot. They are more informative. A lot of leaders have very small ears because they talk more than actually they listen. That's, that's a fact. <laughs>、uh, when you go home, okay, stop interrupting your wife. Because that's what I do. <laughs> I always finish the sentence for them. And when my my children talk, I just couldn't wait for them to finish. I just、uh, correct. Yeah,、uh, it's a very bad thing. And、uh, one of these. The genius about this、uh, skill is that we、uh, we are aware of who we are and we try to improve. So one of those things that I I'm very guilty of is that during a family dinner, when the family bring up a topic to talk about, like a、uh, trade tariff, Trump, or this, or all four by, or whatever they bring up, I always finish it in one sentence, because I know the ending. And I a lot of us are, are, might be like that. And you know what? My daughter said that it's not fun talking to you. <laughs> Because they they don't they don't have the the joy of enjoying the process, so after a while I knew that I had just had to play along and say, oh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And give people a chance to speak. Okay, so、um, that's it. That that will be the final slide. I hope you enjoy. And、uh, well, I don't know how creative you can、uh, think of what kind of application you can use in your organization.、Uh, feel free to chat with me during the lunch. Thank you very much. I found it fascinating. I just, I just the, the the science and the, what he was able to、um, relay about people from their faces was just fascinating. I thought it was really actually、uh, very interesting. I mean, he's got a really dynamic personality, extremely confident, very positive, and of course, it's really funny as well. I like to find a person who can actually e- easy to communicate with and not get stuck with you know a kind of boring conversation or a person that doesn't really communicate much. So, so having <clears throat> that skill to be able to identify the person that you can actually open up and speak to, I, I think that's a great skill to be able to have. And he mentioned this thing about、uh, ears. Yeah, yeah so high ears, low ears. high ears, low ears. So if if high ears,、uh, and he singled me out to say it looks like I have high ears, says you respond quite quickly. So therefore, if you're dealing with somebody with that high ears, then you probably want to be quicker and faster. Somebody low ears. Uh, might take a little bit longer. I think for me,、um, because it was really intriguing, I'd like to go and find a little bit more about it, and maybe join one of his workshops、uh, to be able to use that information and see how we can use it in a practical, everyday, you know, interaction with people.